Hello, everybody. I'm Joshua Hardwell. <laughs> There's no squirrel. The squirrel is not there. The squirrel hasn't been on the house for weeks. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, I am flying the Holy Bro Copus 2. The Copus 1 was one of the best flying, ready-to-fly quads that I have ever flown. I was just blown away. It flew perfectly right out of the box. But it was a little underpowered. The motors were a little bit small. And uh, it didn't really exactly meet modern specs. So here we have the Copus 2 with a BL Heli 32 ESC with an F7 flight controller. And wow, T motor, still T motor motors, but not the T motor airs. No, 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 my friends. T motor F42 Pro, Pro, F42 Pro motors. This is a heck of a spec list. Let's see how it flies. I'll tell you the truth guys, I've been a little hesitant to do this video because the Copus 1 was so freaking good and the Copus 2 on paper should be even better. But the first couple times I tried to tune the Copus 2, I had a few little problems with it. So what I've done is I've put uh, HQ 5x4.3 props on it and these are uh, some of the best freestyle props I think you can get today. They're a little bit heavier than the older 5040s that we all used to go to. They have a little bit more uh, thrust, but modern motors and ESCs can pretty much handle it. And I've been flying this quad on these, and I am much, much happier with it. It comes with Cyclone 5045s or 5046 Dow Cyclone. Those are great props, and these motors really ought to be able to handle them no problem. I still think I don't know, but it's flying great on the 5x4.3s, and as a freestyle pilot, that's exactly what I want to see.
That's more like it. Well, guys, I don't know what the deal is. I don't know why the quad wasn't flying amazing during the tuning session, but it's flying amazing now. I'm thrilled with how it's flying. I can only just guess it didn't like the props or just was maybe just was having a bad day. Um, let's go back to the bench and let's take a look at the specs and how this quad, you know, let's go do the benchy thing and break it down. Here we are at the bench. And here is the Holy Bro Copus 2, which for some of you, this is going to be your first look at it since I've been flying it all day instead of showing it to you. Uh, I figured you'd appreciate that. Don't you hate it when the reviewer it just goes on and on at the bench for hours without ever actually showing you the freaking quad flying? Yeah, I, I try not to make that mistake. The frame is simple. It's a simple design, just four standoffs and a top plate. It is a, I think it's a two millimeter top plate. Let's just check that. Yeah, it's a two millimeter-ish top plate. Uh, the arms are five millimeter and the bottom plate is four millimeter. So pretty standard uh, racing style quad today, although as you saw, it's perfectly functional for freestyle as well. If it does break, well, it's got interchangeable arms, nice uh, countersunk screws here on the bottom so the screw heads are not digging into your battery, although they've also got a custom cut battery pad here as well. Give it a little bit of grip. I would definitely commend, this is the stock battery strap that came with it. It is not a rubberized battery strap. I always prefer to use a rubberized battery strap, but uh, I haven't had any battery ejections yet. Now, one of the things everybody's going to notice about this quad is that it is not using solid carbon for the arms and the bottom plate. This is foam core carbon. It's a some kind of a foam sandwiched in between, it looks like about two millimeter, maybe one and a half millimeter carbon. And this is a controversial decision. A lot of people are going to question whether this is strong enough to hold up to the kind of abuse that we put our quads through. And that's a valid question. I don't know the answer to that question, to be honest with you. I've heard arguments both ways. Some people say that foam core carbon is lighter, stiffer, and just as strong as solid carbon. Other people say that it's not as strong. I, I don't know the answer, and I'm going to have to just punt on this one, but the Holy Bro is going with it, and hopefully they've made the right decision. I've always been really impressed with the antenna mount on the Copus going back to the Copus 1. It is, first of all, it's very robust. It's a, a strong metal bracket held on by a screw, so it's really not going anywhere. And it provides a lot more security for the antenna than other kinds of mounts that I've seen. The decision to have the antenna extend downwards is controversial. There's no doubt that this hurts your range under many flying conditions. The best uh, lo antenna location for range is having it coming up above because the quad is usually pitched forward and that puts the antenna as high as possible above the quad. But that is the worst for durability. It means the antenna is much more likely to get whacked off. Now, a lot of people would prefer to have a TPU mount here because the argument goes a rigid mount makes the antenna more likely to break uh, in a crash, whereas a TPU mount with a little bit of flex is going to sort of give, and there's definitely some truth to that. But what I've found is that the placement of the antenna on uh, was aiming down here does a real good job of keeping it away from any obstacles because when you're flying, it's relatively hard to hit that. You have to get through the props. And I, I found this to be surprisingly durable. And as far as range goes, whether that matters to you depends a lot on whether you're really pushing the range of the quad or whether you're flying well within your video range. For racing pilots, you're often flying in a relatively short range and it doesn't really matter, but you're also often flying at 25 milliwatts and so you kind of need all you can get. For freestyle pilots, you can crank it up to 800 milliwatts. You also may need as much penetration as possible. So this is a tough one. You can always relocate the antenna if you prefer. It is an MMCX a connector on the video transmitter, so it's very easy to install a different antenna or just to move the SMA somewhere else. And if you really wanted to, I think you could probably... I don't know, man, if you did want to move it, you would be in a tough spot because you can see there is just not a lot of room in there. There's enough room to fit the electronics, but not much more. And in fact, you can see I've got the receiver tucked up here on top. There it is right there. And I don't, 
nowhere else. There's not very many good places to put the receiver. And God, gosh, help you if you had a bigger receiver than something like the RXSR. It's going to be a bit of a struggle to get it in there. The FPV camera is a place where a lot of manufacturers of ready-to-fly quads will skimp. You can put a dirt cheap camera on here and uh, make up a lot of profit margin. And it's a real shame because the FPV camera may be the single most important piece of kit on the quad. If you can't see where you're going, then you can't fly. Holy Bro has put the Runcam Swift Micro V2, which is, although not cutting edge, certainly a solid choice. Frankly, there was a time when the Swift was the best camera you could get, and now it's there are probably some better ones out there, CMOS cameras, although some people, especially racers, argue that the older CCD style of sensor, as found in the Swift, is actually better. The one complaint I do have about the camera is that it's shipped with a 2.3 millimeter lens on it, which, uh, at least for my style of flying, is, is a little bit... I, I would like a little more peripheral vision, a little more field of view. These days, I'm flying with a between a 1.8 and a 2.1 millimeter lens. I definitely had times when I was doing, like, sharp turns around obstacles or proximity moves close to trees where I couldn't quite tell how close I was. Either if I was doing a racing turn, I couldn't quite tell where the apex of the turn was, the object, the flag, or gate that I was turning around. Or in the case of proximity freestyle, I wasn't quite sure if I was safe to drift a little closer to that tree or if I was just going to end up in the tree. So I prefer a wider angle than 2.3 millimeter. That's just me. There was a time when I felt different, but as long as I've been flying quads, I've slowly moved to wider and wider fields of view, and I just feel most comfortable with them. The argument goes that a narrower field of view, you can see gaps better and hit gaps better, and there's less fisheye, but I don't feel like my ability to hit gaps is at all compromised when I'm flying on a very wide angle one. I definitely do feel like my ability to have a spatial awareness is compromised when I have a narrower field of view. The electronics on the quad are the Holybro Kakute F7 flight controller. And yes, the F7 flight controller even has an SD card reader like my flight controller used to have way back when. Mm. <laughs> but it's got the... Uh, Tecos BL Heli 32 ESC supports D Shot 1200, ESC telemetry, current sensing, all the bells and whistles, and the Adelatl V2 video transmitter. And I, this is the pl I'm really happy with the Adelatl V2. The Adelatl V1, uh, well, it just lacked some of the features that the V2 brought to the table. So the V2 has these nice LEDs, so you can easily look at the side here and see what your band and your channel is. If you haven't got your goggles up yet, you're having a little trouble figuring out where you're supposed to be at. Of course, it does support smart audio. You can change the settings through your OSD or your Lua script if that's what you want to do. That's no problem. It's got a proper pit mode. It's got nice high output power. It's a really solid video transmitter. Well, there you go, folks. That is the Holy Bro Copus 2. You can order it in a bind and fly with a, with a free sky receiver pre-installed or plug and fly with no receiver and you install your own. And I think it is a worthy successor to the original Copus. It flies really nice. All of the equipment has been upgraded to something better, especially the motors, the powertrain. It's a great freestyle quad, even though it's a bottom mount battery, which a lot of freestyle pilots don't prefer. I think you I mean the results speak for themselves and it's a decent racing quad as well. Uh, if you want to race, although that's not really my forte. If you're interested in the Copus, links are down in the video description and their affiliate links. It sure would mean a lot to me if you'd use them, if I've helped you make a buying decision. And even if you're not interested in the Copus as a quad, take a look at the Holy Bro stack, the Kakute, the Tecos, and the Adelatl HV. Uh, it's a really nice, well-integrated, feature-rich stack, and it gets you flying without having to solder a whole bunch of your electronics together. Everything just kind of goes together really easily. Link to that is also in the video description. Let me know what you think of this quad. At a price of 315 bucks, is this the best value for money, ready-to-fly quad on the market? It's on paper, it might be. The specs are amazing. But is there something out there that flies better even though the specs aren't as good? Hmm. I'll leave you with that thought. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.